Welcome to another show, I'm Sid, and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to create reactive audio effects using Spark AR's patch editor and the Instagram music library, which you can find in the stories section of the app or in the newly launched Reels tab, uh, which I think is going to be a hugely popular feature. It's very similar to TikTok, uh, and it allows you to use filters with Reels to create all kinds of uh, videos which users can edit and it's, it's pretty good. I have a feeling that this patch in particular, the one I'm talking about today, the Instagram music patch, I have a feeling that this is gonna be very cool because as you can see in the preview uh, over to the left, uh, it creates a reactive effect which you can use with any song in the Instagram music library as you would when you post a typical story. Uh, I learned about this patch watching Emilius VGS. Uh, I highly recommend you check his channel out. I've been subscribed for a while. He makes a lot of cool content. Uh, he talked about this patch recently uh, and I've been playing around with the deformation masks and warping the face and a little bit with reactive audio using the Spark AR sound library. Uh, but yeah, seeing this patch in particular gave me a lot of cool ideas and I just wanted to show it off, give you an example of what I'm doing. As you can see, I've got some, some tap to change features and a little bit of reactive audio, which I can't play, but you can see it over to the left. I'm gonna show you some iterations as we go. So uh, the video will change. This is the final result as you're seeing in this file, but I'll create a new project and we'll go through the stages and I'll show you each version as we create it. Uh, this is of course just an example. There's gonna be very many variations of what you can do here. So feel free to experiment and let me know in the comments below what you've done, link to your filters, I'd be happy to check them all out. Uh, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe if you're new, and with that being said, I'm gonna pause the video and create a new project. Uh, let's go. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is switch over here to our FaceTime camera, and then, oh, hello, how's it going? And then I'm gonna open up the patch editor down here, and the first thing I'm gonna do before anything else is just add some instructions. So we'll come up here to device, and then on opening custom instructions, tap to change for this particular one. Spark's made it a lot easier now. It's integrated inside of this uh, device property. So you don't have to go up into project menus anymore. Uh, it's nice and simple. So we'll just add a runtime there of five seconds with tap to change. You can add anything you want or nothing at all, obviously. But uh, when you add that, you have the instructions on screen and then after five seconds, they'll disappear. So now we've got that there. We don't have to think about it again. Uh, that's pretty cool. So now we're gonna double tap again. We're gonna create a new patch, this time for the Instagram music. And as you can see, it is unsupported down here, unsupported by Facebook, and it won't let you install it. It won't let you add it as a patch until you edit the platforms. So click that button to edit capabilities. You can also do that up here in the uh, project menu, edit properties, and that'll bring this up as well. Platforms, you wanna deselect Facebook because this uh, effect is not available on Facebook. So as soon as you've done that, hit done. And now you can double tap again, Instagram music, and now that patch will be in there. So that's just one more thing that you wanna be aware of uh, just before we get started. So make sure you got your instructions there in case you want this published. Uh, it will speed that process up by quite a lot. And also for the Instagram music patch itself, you wanna make sure that you have the Facebook property disabled so that you only have Instagram enabled for this particular filter. And now the next thing you want to do, which I probably should have mentioned before all of this, is go over to the Spark AR website, which I have loaded up over here, and you want to find this distorting the face and adding retouching page. Uh, and on here you'll find a download for the example project. You want to download that, and inside of there, once you've downloaded it, face distortion and retouching, you want to open that up. You'll have the finished and unfinished project from their template. Just click the finished one, objects, and then you'll find this face distortion pack. Uh, I'm just going to drag that to the desktop so that you can see it. And inside of here, we have the face distortion pack.fbx. Now I'm going to drag this inside of our assets panel. You can just save this and you can reuse it and load it as a template whenever you like. So that's just there. So now we have the face distortion pack with this object inside of it. it has all of these components. As you can see, there's uh, options for the scale of the eyes and the nose and the mouth. And then you have this material here, which is set flat, and it's just uh, a material for this. You don't have to worry about it too much. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna open up the add object, and we're gonna add a face mesh to our scene, and I'm just gonna name this one eyes. So as you can see, we've got a face mesh tracking onto the face. We're gonna come here now under deformation, uh, and we're gonna add the face, distor face distortion pack. Uh, and as you can see, it's already working quite well. 
Uh, what you're going to want to do is uh, uncheck the eyes and the mouth because as you can see uh, when you have them checked it creates this kind of warping effect that you're not really looking for with the teeth especially and with the eyes. So if you uncheck those then it will create more of a normal effect. It won't expand or alter the inside of the mouth or the iris. But yeah, basically once you've got this in, I've already made a video about this, you can adjust the scale of all of these features, the eyes, the mouth, the nose, anything you like basically. But we're just gonna leave all of those at zero for now and come back over to our scene, add an object and scroll all the way down to effects. We're gonna add a speaker. If you hit insert, that will appear now, not nested inside of our face tracker, but as its own separate object. Uh, now you wanna come under the properties menu and hit this arrow for audio to create a patch in here. So now if we zoom in a little bit, we can drag from our Instagram audio patch, which we've created, and create an energy mixer. And from here, we can connect the audio to the audio that we've just uh, created a patch for here from our speaker. So now we have Instagram music patch, energy mixer, and our speaker here. So if you test this on your device now, you will find that you can play uh, a song from the music library uh, in your filter. And that is pretty much what we've done here. So that's the uh, instructions now and the patch that sets up the speaker functionality within the patch editor. Okay, so now we're gonna connect up our mesh and create some reactions for uh, our deformation that we've made. So now we have our Instagram music patch, our energy meter here, we're gonna drag out from this energy output and create a transition. That will appear in our patch graph as a vector three. So hit that drop down menu, change it to a number. And now we're gonna come up here to the mesh we've created. In this case, I've named it eyes, so I'm gonna adjust the scale of my eyes. So we hit eye left scale and eye right scale, create two patches for those, move them into place, and then connect them up to our transition here. Now, Amelius recommends a range on your transition between zero and five, which is what I'm gonna use for this example, uh, but you can adjust it. Obviously, you'll have to export and test on device every time you change one of these numbers in any of the patches. So it is a little bit laborious. There's some uh, repetitive time consuming work involved, but it's definitely worth it to experiment and see all the different effects you can get. As you can see in the preview now, the eyes on the left and the right are both pulsing in time with the music, which you can't hear, but I'm sure you can imagine it. And if you're following along at home, I'm sure you can see it for yourself on your own device. Uh, what we're gonna do now though, is we're gonna create a little offset between those two eyes by adding a delay. So if we come down here to our transition, you can drag out from the value and add a delay patch. And now just put that between one of your eyes, in this case, the left scale, and connect that up. So now we have a delay here. And right now the duration set is zero, so we can increase that to, for example, two seconds. And now if we preview it again, you'll see over here, we'll have a very similar effect with the pulsing eyes that are moving in time with the music. However, now one eye is slightly offset from the other. There's a little bit of a delay and it gives it a slightly more punchy effect. Okay, so now I'm gonna take all of these and just drag them down a bit and drag these down a little bit just to give myself some space. Now they're all highlighted, I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna hit this comment around button which will create a box around them. All it does is separate them out from the rest of the patches we've made which will make things a little bit easier as we add more to this effect. So now we have our instructions up here. We have our Instagram music patch connected to this energy meter which is feeding into the speaker which is connected to our uh, end user's device and plays back the music from the sound library. We also have a transition. So as you can see in this preview window, uh, we have the scale of the eyes and this offsetting with the delay, which is pretty cool. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add down here another patch. We're gonna add a screen tap. And we're gonna connect that up to a counter. And this is how we're gonna create our tap to change features. So from here, we're gonna have an equals exactly. And I'm gonna duplicate that. So we have two of them to start with. And I'm gonna change this, leave this first value at zero, change this second value to one because it's a count. And because we only have two right now, I'm gonna change the maximum count here to two. So now if I make this visible, so if I come up to our mesh that we've created for eyes and I make that visible as a patch down here, then I can create, uh, connect it up. And now we have uh, some functionality in here. So if I simulate touch, you won't see it on here, but if I export it and test it on the device, in the preview window over here, you will now see I'll make a little bit more space. You'll now see that I can tap to change and it will go between uh, making the face mesh with the eye deform visible and making it invisible. So now what we're gonna do is come up here to our eyes that we've created and just duplicate that mesh. And now I'm gonna rename it eyes and mouth. 
because for the purposes of this filter, what I'm going to be doing is creating an, an additive tap to change. So every time you tap, it adds a new feature and doesn't take away from the previous one. So eventually you can end up with all of these if you just keep adding, uh, but you can change it around. You can have different things. You can have it tap and change from eyes to mouth uh, and get rid of the eyes or whatever you feel like. But just for this example, that's what I'm going to be doing as an additive feature. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is copy this, all of this, and just paste it down here. And as you can see, we have our transition and our delay still connected to this energy meter. Uh, but it didn't copy over is our eyes scale patches. So if we come up here and check now, you'll see this patch has been created. Those are still here and connected up here. But when we duplicated it, even though we still have the same face distortion pack that we're using, uh, these patches are completely separate. And now we can add them in again. So what I'm going to do down here is add back our eyes for scale right and left make sure you're on the right patch uh, we're going to keep our delay so everything's the same and then i'm going to add that so now we've just recreated this basically in a new patch and with tap to change features we can make this visible uh, there's a patch in here and connect it up to our equals exactly so now what we're doing is tapping and changing between as you can see with these check boxes tapping and changing between the eyes and the mouth being visible and just the eyes Okay, so now I'm going to zoom out a little bit, move these uh, out of the way, the screen tap and the instructions, just give myself a little bit more space. And then under here, I'm going to drag from this energy left now, and I'm going to create another transition just down here. And I'm going to make that one a number as well. So change that one from vector three to number. And now I'm going to come up here to the eyes and the mouth. And for this one, I'm going to add the mouth. So we're going to put that here. And I'm going to create a delay for it as well. So it's at a different time than the other ones that we've got. So we've got a two second delay here. Let's make this one a three second delay. And now, as you can see in the preview, uh, we now have the mouth uh, and it's tapped to change. So you can have the eyes on their own, just pulsing with the music. And you can also have the mouth added on when you tap. Uh, and if you wanted, you could have it be a completely different effect. So it could be eyes and mouth for the first one, and then like nose and chin for the second one. Uh, and you could just cycle through a whole bunch of examples. Okay, so now I'm going to comment around these as well. Same way, right click and then hit comment around just to separate them out. Uh, as you add more layers, things begin will get more complicated. So, oh look, I have the eye on for some reason. Uh, where is that turned up? All the way here. Okay, so there you go. <laughs> That was a weird edit, I guess. Right, now we're gonna do this one more time for our third layer. So we'll make that visible here and uh, add another equals exactly. Set that to be two, make our maximum count three and connect that one up now. So even if I scale this up, it shouldn't appear anymore. So that's working. Okay, so now we're going to copy and paste all of this uh, and drag it down below. Don't worry about the hoodie, it's six days later, but that's not going to affect you in any way. So now we're going to come up to our eyes, mouth, and chin, and forehead. We're going to add the scale for our eyes, exactly the same as before. So the right eye is going to go down here, and the left eye is going to go up here. I'm going to have to move these down just slightly more. So we go like that. Eyes. Oh. Eyes left, eyes right, and now we're going to do the mouth, so we'll add that in with a delay. So now we've created exactly what we've made up here again, as we did before, and now we're going to add uh, another transition here with another delay and another one here. And this time we're going to add a chin scale and our forehead scale. And as always, you're not going to be able to see this in the preview window, but you should be able to, if I export it and add the footage up here, you'll be able to see the preview for that now. Change the duration of our delay. So we've got two, three seconds here. Let's set this one to be one and we'll make this one 2.5, just as an example. And now uh, if I zoom out a little bit, I can maybe tidy this up some. Just a little bit of organization, drag these down a little and then comment around those as well. So now what we have, if I make this a little bit bigger, is we have our runtime instructions. So when you tap to change, or when you open the filter for the first time, you will get the tap to change instructions on screen. Uh, that runs for five seconds and then disappears. We also have our Instagram music patch connected to our energy meter running out through our speaker so that whenever the user selects music from the Instagram music library, that will play inside of the filter that you've created. Then we have all of our transitions here with the delays set up for our eyes, scales, uh, our mouth, our chin, and our forehead. 
and with the tap to change features we've made it so that it's uh, added additive layers so at first it's just the eyes and then it's the eyes and the mouth and then it's the eyes the mouth the forehead and the chin as you can see in the preview over to the left that's pretty much it to be honest it's a very simple effect I just wanted to take what Emilius did in his video, what he showed off, and give like a little bit more example of what you can do with these filters, like how you can add them with other patches and connect them up with what you've already created to make some cool effects. Uh, with that being said, I'm going to end this video here. So thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the content, if you found anything useful, don't forget to hit like, leave a comment, let me know what you thought, and subscribe because we've just hit 800 subs. I know it's taken me a week to record this video. You didn't realize that at the start, I'm sure, but it has, uh, I got distracted and the video has just been sitting on my computer. So, but I finally got around to finishing it. So thank you for watching and there will be new content coming soon. I have a lot of new ideas and uh, yeah, thank you guys. See you next time. Peace. One more thing that I should probably mention is that when I first started this video, I wasn't quite sure how these transitions worked. So um, I've overcomplicated it just slightly here and you can get rid of some of these if you want. So you see how this transition here comes from the energy meter, connects to the delay and then connects outwards to these two patches. So we have the delay patch here and we have this for the right scale here without the delay. We could, uh, once I've duplicated this one down here, we could just drag from this transition to this delay and completely get rid of this just to simplify things a little bit. And we can do the exact same thing down here. So if I get rid of these three, then I can connect the transition up to here. And providing that you have a different transition for each layer that you want to tap through, then this will have absolutely no impact. And if anything, just cleans up your patch graph slightly. So there's a little extra bonus content uh, at the end of the video. Thank you for watching again, and I'll see you next time. Peace. <laughs>